What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and welcome to another video. Look, I got uh, the weekly winner from number one this week. Awesome. That's my second or third one of that. Um, today, we're going to do some judgment. A lot of people have been liking the judgment video, so I know there's been like three judgment videos in the past four videos, I think. I should know, you know those top plays mixed in, so I think three of the last five videos are judgment videos, including this one. Hopefully, you guys don't mind. And somebody asked me um, to go more in depth on the judgment picks and spend a little bit more time in the draft so they can learn a little bit more like how I go about drafting a good judgment deck and stuff like that because I do get pretty good judgment decks and I end up getting five wins with judgment decks uh, almost all the time. So I'll try to slow it down this time and really think through all the picks. So let's go through it. So I look at these, uh, I look through all the rows, and I see in the beginning it doesn't really, uh, really you want to take like the best scrolls, but here I know that Bombard is like amazing in a range deck, but there are no other range creatures here. Um, look at like what colors are shouting at me at the most. It's like Bombard, Feedback Jolt is okay. Not much good stuff on these. Like, honestly, the best, like, creature combo here would be Muda Fighter and Elmire Tribesman. In fact, <laughs> Muda Fighter and Elmire Tribesman are the only creatures on these two rows. So it looks like I'm mostly in Decay, but then this row has nothing on Decay. So it's really just pick whatever you think is the best thing here. And I'll take the Bombard, because if I happen to go with a ranged deck, this would be amazing. So I'll just grab the, gum the Bombard instead of, instead of taking a mediocre creature. And enchantments I'll get later. So Bombard here. You can see a Snarkle is the only creature here, so... First, since we just have an Illumire Tribes in here, I'll take the Muda Fighter, considering these three scrolls are not too useful. You want to make sure you get creatures. So I'll get the Muda Fighter. And, um... Also in Judgment, you can get away with having, like, two health units and having them probably survive because there's less removal in Judgment. Because the decks aren't perfect to combat stuff. Uh, there is a Snarkle here. I have a Snarkle and a Snarkle Brain. <laughs> I'm not sure what I want to do though. I think I'll just take the Trizen because if I go with Decay, he'd be a really nice guy to have. And I already have a Mudo Fighter. And now here, there's an Umlasa High Guard. So now I'm really looking the Decay stuff kind of. There also is an Infected Grave Lecture, but Infected Grave Lecture is a pretty bad scroll. A very bad scroll. Um, 2 2 3 for 2 is normal, but then he can't move, so that's like terrible. <laughs> here, I'll take the Snarkle though because there might be an energy considering there's a Bombard there, so I'll just grab that. And I see Damn and Curse and a Grave Lock Freak. Those are two very good scrolls. Um, looks like Damn and Curse will be more uh, useful to me because I'm in more uh, Decay stuff because I'm going to take this Ohm Lhasa High Guard. But if I take some here and see the next row is something really good energy, I'll have to think twice. So let's just see. What do we want to take here? Um, I'll take the Julie, really the Snuggle Brainer Squire. I think I'll take the Snarkle Brain to stay on color with the energy stuff, but I don't like order decks in Judgment anyways. I feel like when I go order in Judgment, it's a little, it never is as good as I want it to be. So I'll take the Snarkle Brain, even though Snarkle Brain isn't that good. Okay. And here I see growth order and energy stuff, but now I'll definitely take the Ohm Lhasa High Guard, and I'll see what happens. We have kind of messed stuff down here. Okay, Damon Curse or Freak, it basically is. Here, the best scroll for Judging probably would be just the Pillar of Disease. It's a decent wall, believe it or not. Four health. And, um. I'm not in growth at all. Probably just take the Snarl Hunter. I will take the Damon Curse because removal and Judgment is so hard to come by. As much as I want to take that Grave Lock Freak, I have a little bit more stuff in it, uh, Decay right now. I don't really clap, count Snuggle Marina, so I'm pretty good. Miasma Will, Waking Stones, Catapult of Goon, Mountain Food. Not getting the best draft here. Here I'll take the Snuggle Hunter, just because I'm kind of in energy. I might go dual color. And now I have a choice between a Boom Reaver and an Eager Shrier. So we'll make that choice as we get closer to it. 
here, like I said, I don't have any undead creatures actually, so Accenture the Lost right now would be kind of pointless. I'll just take the Pillar for uh, Disease. It might come in handy. And here, another, so both of these rows have a, have a decent energy and decay thing. Like this row has Boom Reaver and Eager Scryer, this row has Oblivion Seeker and Dust Runner. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll choose it when I get to it. Uh, my as well is not as good as it used to be. Now it's just, I mean it helps poison damage. I don't have any poison scrolls though. Monster's Brood is kind of bad. Unless you like just Necrogeddoned. So I'm not going to, I think I'll just take the, might as well just in case I get like an Infectious Blight. That'd be awesome. Actually no, Infectious Blight doesn't get increased by Maswell. Maswell only increases basically poison from poison from like rain lice and poison from uh like mangy rat and stuff like that and bitter roots so might as well is kind of bad but i will take it over the other stuff because i'm I de i'm definitely going to be either in decay or energy we've gone through um almost a quarter of the draft and now here i see a tick bomb which could help uh, probably the best scroll for judgment on this row I'm not going to go for the 8 cost order thing, so as you can see, I'm definitely, early on, I'm trying to get more creatures, because he, the creatures don't make the deck, and then you have the complementary scrolls, so I'm going to get towards, and then as we get towards the middle of the 45 picks, then I'll kind of have an idea of what creatures I have, and what deck it's going to be about, then I'll start getting more complementary scrolls, I want to make sure I have at least, like, 13, 14 creatures in the deck, because that's what you want. I might be in a dual color deck here, energy, okay, which isn't bad if I get, like, uh, if I get like dark strikes or energy siphon, so we'll see. And I do have a bombard, so I'm leaning towards this boom reaver. Bombard with the boom reaver and the dust runner is really good, but I still think my decay stuff is better because I have more decay creatures and more decay structures. So I will go with the eager squire, um, and then the oblivion secret looks like I'll go with as well. Another mudo fighter. Snorkel Omelette is pretty decent. Uh, not in Judgment, though, because you need to have Brave Blocks to make it work. Um, so, that I, I might like just draft this so I can... If there's a really valuable card in a row, I might just take it because I trust my abilities to win even with one dead card in the deck. Because that way, if I uh, go like 5-0 with it, I'll be able to like take it with me. Um, but I don't think I'll do that. I'll take the Oblivion Seeker here. Nice card draw. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna close the door. The dog's barking. Okay. Hopefully it's not as loud. And another K down here. We have a Revenant. That's okay. Um, and a useless contraption is okay. Here I'll take the Tick Bomb. Maybe I'll have like a splash of energy while I have a tick bomb in there. Uh, structures are very uh, prevalent in um, Judgment. I will go with the Mudo Fighter here. Uh, here I'll go with the Revenant. Uh, plating is pretty good because Plating has Replenish. These Replenish scrolls are pretty good in Judgment because it's almost like... It's like you can play them and then you get other resources, anything you want because you get it in Wild. So like when I play this, I'll get too wild. And also, even if you're not in a multicolored deck, these are still goodies. They basically cost zero. They cost no resources to play, but you need to have at least two energy. You kind of get what I'm saying? Because it's going to replace its energy, but you have to have like a minimum of two energy to play it. So plating is good, but I do I might want to just grab another pillar of, uh, pillar of disease. So I will do that. I'm going to just grab another pillar of disease. Um, Arbalister. This row, you see this row is kind of like not where I'm where I'm headed. So I'll probably just take the Arbalizer and maybe just stick it in the deck so I can take it at the end because I know Arbalizer is a very valuable scroll. Um, if you don't know how I like valuable scrolls, you just like go to the store, black market, um, just search up the scroll. So Arbalizer is going for 1300 gold right now, so that's pretty, uh, that's pretty valuable. Um, if, if, uh, if a card is going over 1000 gold, it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty valuable so but we're not at that pick yet i'll take the uh new orders because or binary that's like nice removal almost binary is a nice common version we have a lot of i think this might be like our third or fourth stag heart man what if what if we start what if we want to throw in all those stag hearts here i will take the siege cracker because again this might be an energy 
Rare Black Elves, I did not take that Freak before, but there's also a Stitcher, so that'll be a tough choice for me. Like I said, I'll take the Arbalister here. Scavenger Contract in case I get a Animavore. And there's this Bog Cannon here, an Uneasy Alliance, which is good. And a Burn. Another Maswell and a Gun on it. Right, now we have some decisions to make. We have 12 Decay Scrolls, 6 Energy Scrolls, 7 Decay Creatures, so we're definitely in Decay more. So yeah, I'll take the Sister instead of the Elder. And then uh, instead of the Uneasy Alliance, although it can be really good on the, uh, the, what's it called? The Eager Scryer. I'd rather just take another creature. So I'll take the Stitcher. And there's a Rot Deer down here, which is very good. The Bog Hound. And... Might as well burn. We're at 14. We're probably not going to be mono resource. We're probably going to have like a splash of energy or something. So I'll grab the burn. Maybe I'll have it in the deck. So I'll take the burn. These might as well are just not good enough to really warrant having it. Uh, Rod, some people in Judgment tend to not have too much success because they are just taking the best card on each row, which is not what you want to do uh, when you get towards like the middle picks. Because like, I guess this isn't really a good example because Quake's not that good anymore, but if, uh, if, I don't know, like, if there's, like, an amazing, uh, if there's, like, a Rolleross in this row, even though how good Rolleross is, he's not part of, like, the deck. So there's a very little chance I'm going to go into order for the rest of the draft. So I'd rather just take, like, a lesser scroll that's part of the faction I'm in, um, which is Rod Eater. Rod Eater's pretty good, though. Here I'll take the another Bogcan, Pillar of Fatigue, and a Storm Rider. Even though I'm more into Ken, I might just take Storm Rider. Storm Rider is so incredibly awesome. He's so strong. In Judgment, you might not have the attack box you need for him, but he's still a deadly force. Uh, I'll take the Blind Rage over the Storm I think we have a good amount of creatures coming in it. I'd rather have some removal now. And all the Gaze is decent. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to be multicolor, I think. I'll take the Storm Runner over the Pillar of Fatigue. Actually, Pillar of Fatigue and an Eager Scry. I can get some card draw from that. Should I do that? Pillar of Fatigue and an Eager Scryer. Um, so many... Sh do, we, do we really have to move around a lot? Let's take... Let's take the Pillar of Fatigue and the Eager Scryer. That can be... Uh, get a lot of scrolls uh mess stuff down here here i'll take the i'll take arthritis kind of sucks so i'll take the gun automaton um another elmire tribes down there which is good hopefully i get some more like high costed decay creatures mobile link gaze is decent it's cursed too and major i'll take the mobile link gaze here Prisoners of a Sanctuary of the Lost Six, but I don't have any undead creatures, I don't even think. Whatever. I'll take the... Snarl. Uh, tribes in here. There's an undead creature, the Husk. A Rot Eater, which is good. A lot of Decay 3 drops, I'm noticing. I guess I'll just grab this, maybe I can get like a Harvester later or something. I'll take the Husk, I might not play it. Then a Rot Eater. Wicked Bean can turn something into Darkling, so that's not too bad. Here, I'll go ahead and take... And a reason to have some, like, surprise board clear, or Rebel Katan. Rebel Katan. Rebel Katan's pretty good in Judgment. Another Eager Scryer. I think that's good with our Pillar of Fatigue. So we could have had, that, like, a Grey Block deck, but... We went, to, we went with more, like, Decay stuff. I'll take the Wicked Being... Okay, so now there's an erode. How much decay stuff do we have? We have 23 decay. So we, we could, we're at a point in the draft where we can still actually change. We have to be a decay. We can actually change to decay growth instead of decay energy. Um, as long as we get like certain draws. So I will take the erode here. Um, I'll take the eager scryer. I mean, we're still getting decent decay creatures. So I'll take like the our heart's Dis disciple instead of... Pillar of Disease. Here, I don't know. I'll take Boom Reaper, I guess. Horn of Ages, I think, is uh, stronger than New Orders, so I'll take the New Orders. I mean, the Horn of Ages, what am I saying? 
Um, I don't know, Catapult Oath here. Now we have a tough choice here. I wish these were different rows. Curse Monger and Pestilence, they're both very strong. Well, Curse Monger is a stronger scroll, but Pestilence is pretty good with that my, the Miasm Wall I have. Hex Marks, Beetle Stone, Animavore. I've I had a. I had a, what's it called? I had a. Um, scavenger Contract. So I now have a Scavenger Contract, Animavore. And that's it. So how many creatures am I going to have? I'm going to have 17 creatures, that's just fine. At least 17, I might have energy stuff. Now what do I want to take? Pest Simulator or Curse Monger? Dude, I have, I have Oblivion Seeker, so I do go to 5, I do go to 5 Decay. Um, and my other 4 drop would be Curse Monger and a Stitcher. The thing is, both of these are pretty good. Well, I have that Miasma well, so I think Pest Simulator might be really nice. But then I love the Curse of the Curse Monger. Hmm. Like if I curse and then I can burn something, that's so cool. You know what? We're gonna go with the pest simulator. I think that makes for more fun plays. And then uh, hex marks at the end. So here's our deck. We can almost go mono. Let's add these scrolls. Let's see what we have. This is pretty good stuff. Uh, let's take out the husk for now. Um, I want this. Uh, a lot of three drops, like like I said. I want to keep them as well because I have a pest simulator. Sanctuary of the Lost. I don't have any undead creatures, so there's really no point in me having this. <laughs> yeah, this guy isn't undead, right? Yeah, he's not undead. Then I have a bunch of three drops. A lot of three drops. Wow. And the rest of the stuff is pretty decent. Let's see, I have, I could add four scrolls. So, I could just put the husk and the Sanctuary of the Lost in and then just have Binding Root and a Road. A Road can be a nice workaround structures thing. But I, sh I should probably just go into energy. But the energy stuff I want is so high costed, that's a thing. And I don't have anything to bring me into the energy. Like, I don't have any, uh... I don't dark. I don't have uh, energy siphon, so like as much as I want blind rage and burn for some like removal, I do have already have a damage here, so I don't really need to go into that. It's just so hard to get up there. Uh, I really need lower drops. Let's go ahead and give myself. I think buy me written a road is just gonna be a better option, and I don't really need. I can. Husk, Sanctuary of the Lost, I think, I'll put in the Husk. And <laughs> do I really need Sanctuary of the Lost just to make this guy, like, on, uh, survive? I don't think I need to do that. Let's put in, like, one Horn of Ages. That could come in handy. Right, so we have a little weird deck, probably won't get to any of the, just, the scrolls that aren't decay, but whatever. Or do I just want to put the Arbalizer in so I could take it at the end? Eh, it's fine. We have enough Arbalizers, so let's name this... Just decay. It doesn't matter what you name it to the deck if you didn't know. You can't even go back and look at it. So hopefully I get a match right away, and I did. So yeah, I spent a lot more time than I usually do on that draft. I spent almost 20 minutes on that. Usually I spent about 10 minutes. But people still want me to go more in depth on it, so I did. And... I don't know, do I want to keep this hand? I guess so, because I could just play one drop, and then I have a bunch of other stuff I could go with. So get rid of the Binding root. Play the Husk. No two drop, but whatever. Okay. If you play a husk on turn one, it's almost like playing a two drop on turn two. Because the husk has three counts on, so it would like it would attack when the two drop would. Kinda get what I'm saying. Hollow, haggard, happy to help. Is he really happy to help? It doesn't look too happy to help. Okay, honestly, I'm completely fine with that Copper Automaton destroying that. Because he's energy, I almost want to shy away from the Pillar of T Disease and be like a Tech Bomb or something. Yeah, and I like these scrolls right here. The key against energy, Mudo Fighter with the Magic Armor is pretty decent. And I want to keep my Eager Scryers for the, uh, for the Pillar of Fatigue is out. And then the Rot Eater is one of my best creatures. So I can go with three pretty strong creatures coming up. Let's see. 
So it's so just one for one trade here. I don't mind that. We both lost the uh, one cost creature. Uh, Animal War, do I want to keep that? I'm going to get rid of that because seeing these energy, like I said, there might be tick bombs and like incendiaries. So I might lose my scavenger construct. So I don't think it's worth it to get down right now. And I will get down the four attack guy first because that means almost whatever he puts down, a three cost, it could have four health. I could move towards it this coming turn. That's why I chose uh, the Muno Fighter instead of the Rot Dieter, the Eager Sire. Okay, so he just challenges right in the middle row, so I won't have to move. And I will sacrifice the Bog Hound for Scrolls, see what I get. I'll just play Rot Dieter in front of this. I don't want to see like a, a uh, Iron Whip on that and be able to destroy this guy. So I'll put the Rot Dieter in front. And hopefully there's no burn here. You can burn either of those two guys. We'll see. And next turn, I can sacrifice the resources, play one of those three drops, and then the following turn, I have a pest assimilator ready to go out. So it's looking pretty decent for me right now. He's sacrificing for scrolls. Oculus Cannon. Okay, he's using an Oculus Cannon for protection. I'm fine with that, I guess. And because it doesn't look like I'll be destroying this Gravelock Outcast this turn, Instead of sacrifice, oh, okay, we got a Elmire Tribesman. So I could either use Pillar Fatigue for defense or Elmire Tribesman for defense. And I'm leaning towards Pillar Fatigue, I mean disease, because that's going to absorb uh, more damage than the Tribesman because this will decrease its attack by two, by one. So I'll do that, and I'll save that Eager Scryer. And the reason I sacrifice for resources is so that Next turn, I can sacrifice resources again and play the Pest Simulator. Okay. Let's see what King Ken has in store for us. I'll probably... My charge coil is a little annoying. Like, I don't have much deep things to deal with structures. Damage curse can't really destroy structures. And a copper automaton. So at least that doesn't even get through. I, I actually destroy the copper automaton with my rod eater, so I'm not. I don't care about that. And it looks like he has he has his energy. There's like structures. He doesn't have that many creatures on right now. So I will um, play the Stitcher, and I won't play the Pest Simulator because the Pest Simulator the poison effect. Um, he's good when the opponent has a lot of clumped up units, like creatures, but he's just gonna have like a structure here, so he might have a lot of structures. I'll just get rid of the pest simulator and play a stitcher. So I'll move down this way so I can possibly destroy this charge coil the next turn. And I'll put a stitcher, move you back. So that in case he has like a burn for this guy, you get buffed a little bit. And put a stitcher right in front of you. In case like there's an iron whip or something to destroy you. So you gotta think about the possibilities. You have to think about the possibilities the other opponent can do. More so in like ranked matches and constructed dex matches. In judgment not so much because like it's hard to think of every scroll out there. And chances are they have don't have like 90% of the scrolls. But it's nice to just know like the common scrolls that they might have that can really screw you over. So, what I would fear the most right now is just like, I don't know, burn or blind rage to destroy that guy, but I should be fine this turn. And because I sacrificed the Animavore, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with sacrificing the Scavenger Construct. So, alright, he gets rid of the that, and he is going to take out the Rot Eater. Okay, he doesn't take out this, takes out that. And this guy has magic armor one, so that's why he couldn't spark this guy, because the magic armor would have taken one of the damage, so he would be at one health. Turns out if he sparked him, he may have died from the charge coil. But yeah, the charge coil deals combat damage. So now I have a choice to destroy this or this. First of all, I'm going to sacrifice the Horn of Ages for decay, so I can play that Oblivion Seeker. And I would rather take down this this charge coil because it's attacking every turn. And it might be able to destroy this Moodle Fire next turn. And I'll move up here so I can threaten this Gravelock Outcast. So I do like where I am on the board right now. I have a little bit more resources than him. We've got just the amount, 
just the same amount of scrolls. I was fortunate to go first, I believe, too. And hope I can get, like, maybe color fatigue stuff going. I don't know. Also, okay, this, this, this is a bug right now, guys. The proximity charge looks like cloud uh, useless contraptions. It's really weird. I'll get rid of the scavenger construct. Revenant might be useful to taking down the proximity charge. So let's get rid of that. And I don't know what I, I definitely don't want to give up the stitcher and just attack that. I might. This guy's a ranged attack, so we can get through the proximity charge kind of well. I'm not sure what I want to do here. I'll play a. Maybe I'll just play a Revenant and attach it to this Oblivion Seeker so it can't go down to this. I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna play a Revenant. Stitch it to this. So now you're gonna survive this outcast attack, and then I'll stick a Mudo Fighter up here. Okay, not too bad. So now I have a strong Oblivion Seeker, which I won't even be that mad if it dies, just like a good card draw. So basically, the Revenant was just a 2 2 enchant. Doesn't do a lot to me because this guy's magic armor one, so maybe uh, maybe King Ken forgot the magic armor and thought it would destroy this Muno Fighter. So it does deal one damage to these guys, but I'll be fine. And lucky for me, I'll be able to destroy this proximity charge with this ranged Oblivion Seeker this coming turn. And I will get rid of one of the Eager Survivors. And it looks like I'll just play one of the creatures. So I'll move up. I'd rather deal damage to middle idle. In case there's a Thunder Surge, I'll stay kind of separated. Like I said, you can't really predict a Thunder Surge in Judgment because the chances he has a Thunder Surge are very slim. But just in case. And I'll put a Rot Eater in front. Like I said, I'd rather just save this Eager Surge for when I have Pillar Fatigue out. And I won't put Level of Gaze on anything. Level of Gaze used to be just like a massive curse thing so you can destroy like high health units with poison but now it also like it's more used for um what i've seen the past couple uh weeks is for the move decrease almost like a binding route so it has like a multi it's like i like these guys these kind of scrolls like multi-purpose Ether pump, I have to watch out for that because that would take out this Mudo Fighter, but it's in front row, so I should be able to destroy it barring a potion of resistance. And at this point, I don't think that a pill of fatigue is going to be useful for me. So I'm going to get rid of the Eager Scryer for scrolls, and I know I can play like a combination of these scrolls because they add up to five. Almost a high I can play next turn, which is good. So now I can stitch something and make this Rot Eater stronger. I could sacrifice the Stitcher and then have the Mudo Fighter destroy the Outcast. There's a lot of possibilities here. A lot of possibilities. And what I'm going to do is just put down creatures yep i'm not i'm not gonna like even stitch anything and i'm gonna deal a little bit of damage to that so now king ken has a choice in moving up or down at the moment he does not have enough damage to destroy the rot eater he does have enough damage to destroy the Oblivion Seeker, so that's unfortunate that that dies, but I'll be getting some scrolls from that. And if this Mudo Fighter survives, hopefully he can take out this Ether Pump this coming turn. 
okay so just that is going to take out the stitcher as well so that was good inferno blast and wisely clicked over here so he would get the r hearts disciple to get hit a little bit because um he knew the said magic armor so it wouldn't matter and i'm going to if i damning curse i think it deals one magic damage to my creatures so i do think that the mudo fighter would, would survive but i don't think it's worth it just to damage curse this raider um i could go with a pillar of fatigue after i move this guy because i think i mm, actually yeah i'll just play the um loss i think i guess get rid of the erode for decay I'll move here so i'm threatening this stuff destroy the ether pump move out of the way and then i'll put down this ohm loss of high guard to stop this in its tracks and if he has like a double magic and stuff like that then so be it and he can't move away to destroy this yeah ohm loss of high guard is a very interesting scroll i think it might be a not strong enough for six cost being at only four health four health is pretty good but for six costs i kind of like a little bit more health but he seems like an incredible thing to just put in front of a witch doctor. A nice guard for that witch doctor. It's also the only unit right now that has the warrior subtype. Okay. So these guys are attacking next turn for uh, King Ken. But I have these two guys. These three guys actually. And he's moving away from the Arhart's Disciple. Disciple, but moving right into these guys. But he's hiding behind a proximity charge. Or a cloudy useless contraption. And it looks like I'll be able to destroy this raider with the Arhart's Disciple. Disciple. I think it's Disciple. We haven't had to use that damn curse yet. I don't think we will have to use it just yet. Because these guys aren't like strong enough to really want to damn curse. I will go ahead and... Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to sacrifice something to destroy this proximity charge. I think this turn it might be uh, worth it to just lose this bog can. I would buff the rot eater and I would get to have the modifier destroy the outcast. So I think I'll do that. I'll get rid of the malevolent gaze for scrolls. My ass well and a. Uh, Okay, so I'll go like this. And I'll put a tribesman up here. And that'll be that. I know I could play other stuff, but I don't think it's that wise to play them right now. And it's just nice to keep uh, the Almas a high guard on that lane so that the Snargle has move zero. It's it's strange how the Almas a high guard gives somebody move zero, so that's like definitive you can't move next turn. But unless you like destroy the Almasa. But things like uh Move on gaze, we just looked at it, says decrease move by two, which is instead of decrease move by one, decrease move by two just to prevent things like them roasting beaning out of there or wings captaining out of there. But yeah, it's just it's just weird. Maybe an iron whip on this to destroy both of those guys. I don't know. Spark on this rod to destroy it. If the rod eater can survive, I'll be very happy. Okay, I, I could start winning the game kind of soon as well because I have the hex marks and this destroyer has zero attack when the Omos is there. It does do it to units. Okay, but that protection doesn't really do anything because I could just move this Mudo fighter and destroy it. 
I guess it saves one creature because then I would have just been able to move the Moodle Fighter up and destroy both of these guys. So, honestly, King Ken is kind of lost here. I mean, you're the Pillar of Fatigue. I don't think Pillar of Fatigue is something I'm going to need. I think it's better to keep. If you have War Control. Okay, let's move down like this. Destroy the Copper Autopilot. Even though it's going to destroy itself, I'd rather just save my own creature. And. Get you in front of you so you can chase this hard smuggler around. And get a pest assimilator in front. So I can like poison stuff. So it's looking good for us. Looking very good for us. I have six resources, which is because my highest drop was a six drop, almost a high guard, but I might go higher if I have an important play to make. Six resources is a nice number. I have a lot of scrolls in my hand. Oculus Cannon, there. Okay, interesting. He just like... He doesn't have much he could do. King Ken. King Ken has kind of lost. Let's get rid of the Erode for Scrolls. Move you up and destroy it. I'm gonna clump everybody up because honestly, a thunder surge doesn't even doesn't even do a whole ton to me. Keep you guys up there so I can destroy that idol up top. Place just place an oblivion seeker just in case something dies. I need the card draw. And he can't even move with this hired smuggler. Almost a high ride. I didn't know it would be this effective. It's pretty cool. So I assume like if some if I had this in the second row, my unit in front of it would actually be hurt. Oh no, any unit facing almost a high guard with no units in between. Does this guy have like four in front of blasts? That's that's a lot of Inferno Bless. Yep, King can see he has no way of winning, so that's that. So that worked pretty well. I think I'll get five wins of this deck. So that'll be it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed the slow down. I also didn't even notice I was I was just going to slow down during the drafting. But I also ended up slowing down in the playing too. I was trying to explain more of my plays. So I don't know, I guess that's good because uh, Scrolls release is coming uh, around, so a lot of new players are probably going to be watching my videos. I'll have to teach them. I don't know. So thanks for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content like this. And keep on scrolling, Scrollgers. I will see you tomorrow.